Ooh, that looks tasty. Welcome, folks. Today, the Hungry Gamer is back with another mini review, and today we're talking about Arena the Contest Tanaris Adventures. And this is one that I have been waiting for for years. Literally years I've been waiting for this one. Because years ago, I was very kindly sent a review copy of Arena the Contest. And when I got Arena the Contest, I thought, well, it's fantasy, so I want it. <laughs> it's kind of what it was. But I thought it was going to be mostly a arena combat game, which it is. With kind of a story narrative kind of tacked on. And boy, was I wrong about that. It was a fantastic narrative. I really liked it. And I was in touch with Alexandre, one of the designers, and he told me that there's more coming. There's some new exciting stuff coming. More story, more depth for the solo co-op experience. So I was really excited about it. I backed it right away, and I waited, and I waited, and I waited, and it finally kind of sort of arrived. I say it kind of sort of arrived because I have received this big old honking box that I just showed you. But none of the other stuff. I haven't gotten the kind of the Kickstarter stretch goals yet, and I haven't gotten my upgraded minis of the heroes from the first game. Because in between the time when I first got Arena the Contest, which is actually right over here, you can't quite see it, but it's right there. And now I started painting miniatures. And I used, I should say painting miniatures. I'm not very good at it, but you know, slop and drop, slop some paint, throw them on there. It looks better than just gray. But since I now have the new upgraded miniatures from Arena the Contest, well, I'm going to want to paint those, but I don't want to paint the old ones. I want to paint the new ones that are better, so I'm kind of waiting for those to come around. But there are enough things in this other box that I could play right away. So I played Canadian Kev's out here visiting, so we played through a whole bunch of it, painted some stuff, played as much as I could, and now I've packed it away until I get the rest of my stuff, which it sounds like may possibly still be in China because there's some kind of shipping snafu, whatever. So I played a lot of it. Now I'm putting it away until the new stuff comes, I can paint it up, and then I will go on through the rest of the way. That said, when you're playing this campaign, you play through five weeks or so of the game, which each week is four adventures and city phases and all this stuff. And I've played through an entire week. So maybe 20% of one campaign or so is what I've played through. And I feel like I can talk to you about roughly what's going on here. So I feel confident talking to you about it because I'm very familiar with the read of the contest. Anyhow. Very big preamble to get to talking about this game. Briefly, what's happening in Tanaris Adventures is it is a large in-depth story. And what's going to happen is, and the broad structure is, you're going to start each week with your city phase. You actually have some adventures first, but you have your city phase. And in that city phase, you're building up kind of your settlement. And it's a little kind of deck building game that you're doing. It takes, I don't know, 15 minutes, maybe, where you're drawing characters from a deck of cards, and those cards are gonna they're gonna have abilities, you're gonna use that to recruit other characters to get various materials or to make new weapons or upgrade the town, which is going to allow you to make even better weapons and stuff later on. Maybe you're going to go to the tavern and draft more heroes that can come fight with you and join your party, and it also at the same time improves your deck, or things like that. Kind of party management is what you're doing. Then you'll go and off and you'll do some kind of adventure. Now what's going to happen is you're going to choose an adventure. You're going to have two or three each time. And by picking one, there's a good chance that you're locking away the others. You're not going to get to do the other ones. And that's going to kind of change something that's going to happen down the line in your story. But then you'll go, you'll do your adventure. And while you're doing your fight, your combat, you're going to be doing a lot of what you did in Arena of the Contest, where you're rolling your d20, you have your target number. If you hit... You're going to do X amount of damage, and some kind of effect's going to take place. If you miss, you'll do residual damage, you'll do a little bit of damage, so you're always doing something. But what's happened here in the Tanaris Adventures is now you have a bunch of more cards, a bunch more abilities that you have. And as you go through the game, you're going to be able to upgrade the access to new abilities with your character class. Along with that, each character class now has a dashboard with various skills that you can use but only on another character's turn. So if another character's going, I can activate some of my skills to help them out or do something. But overall, it's the same type of adventure experience you had in Arena of the Contest, just with a lot more in-depth character building, character growth, and flexibility and options that you have with each character. You can go check out my old Arena of the Contest video to kind of learn a little more about what I thought about the combat there, but overall, I do really like it. I find it to be relatively quick, 
and with the tactical decisions you make to be very, very satisfying, after you do the adventure, you go back, you do the city again, but more things have opened up as you've been going through. Slowly, your characters will get higher and higher level, and maybe some might die, but of course, you can always go to the tavern, get a new character, then kind of replace them, and so on and so on. And then after you've done an entire week, you do a world phase. And this world phase is kind of you fighting back against these invaders that are going on. I don't feel like it's much of a spoiler because the very first thing that happens is this invasion goes on. And you're slowly, again, it's still a deck building game, but you're fighting back against these invaders, trying to reclaim territories, reclaim land. And as you complete adventures, it unlocks little quest cards that'll be out on this world map that you're dealing with as well. And then you go back and you do another week, and you progress through this story. And again, as you go through, the quests that you don't do will have negative consequences, while the ones that you do succeed will probably have a positive consequence, but could have some negative consequences well down the road. So that's a super broad overview with no video on how it plays, because it's just, it's just so much going on. But what do I like about this game? The first thing is it's taken everything that I liked about the combat and arena of the contest. And you can go back and check out that old video if you want. Not the best sound, not the best video quality, but the idea is I stand by. And it's added a level of complexity to the characters that I really like. You have options, and the further along you go throughout the game, you're unlocking new cards that you can take with you, but you can't take all of them. You can only take some of them. So now you're making choices as to which cards you want to use, which abilities you want to have access to. At the same time, your character dashboards that I mentioned with all the skills on it, you're going to be choosing skills from different levels. And even at the beginning of the game, you have six skills, but you can only choose four of them. So you're kind of picking what it is that you're using you have access to. And so I like the added complexity for the characters, which is not something that I would have liked particularly playing the combat mode, the PvP mode, because I want PvP to go quick. But in the PvE, I want to have more choices. I want to be able to choose how my character is going to play a little more than I might otherwise. So I really do like that. I also really like the skills, how that works. It lets you to, it allows you to interact on other players' turns a little bit more, but not a ton, but a little bit. We say, wait, 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 don't do anything yet. I'm gonna use this skill which is gonna do five damage to this thing and now, and it's gonna move it one step into the fire, it's gonna hurt a little more, and then you can take it out. I think that works really, really well as a kind of a low impact, constant interaction that you have. So I, I do like that. I think the new characters that have been introduced, I like them. They, well, they're really good. I like them. I don't know what, what more to say than that. And I'm very excited to be able to play my older characters once I can get them painted up, When again, whenever it is my, my other stuff arrives. Now, I want to spend more time actually talking a bit about the city and world phase, because to me, that's where I think the biggest change is that I think is for the good. Whereas in the arena of the contest, you did have a little breather in between, but mostly it was a story and maybe it was a little puzzle you'd try to figure out. But now you have this so sometimes you have little puzzles and stuff, because before each adventure you're going through, you're doing little skill checks, you're making choices, you're rolling dice, and you may get bonuses, you may get hurt before you even start the adventure, like in Arena of the Contest. But now you have this city phase, which is not hard. It's a very quick thing, and you're making relatively quick choices. It's very fun to kind of have the discussion with somebody, well, what do we want to do with the stuff that we have? I like that a lot. I love that you're getting new characters, which are going to either, which are both going to build up your deck, and unlocks more options of who it is you're taking on your adventure with you as you're building up a party of different characters you can take. It's one of the things that I often have a problem with in Dungeon Crawls is there's all these great characters and I'm stuck with two or three or four, or however many I have, and I'm not seeing them all. This is going to kind of allow me to see more characters as they go through. Really, really like that. But why I like this city phase the most is it's such a nice breather. It's this lovely kind of palate cleanse calm breath of fresh air where you can kind of plan and plot and do this other aspect of the game but it's not overwrought it's not long i mean you could probably knock it out in five minutes if you wanted but you know 10 15 minutes and i really really like that i like this i'm making and picking with the kind of weapons that i want i'm choosing do i want to unlock more weapons i'm choosing which npcs do i want to try to get to join my party that can then come with me into the dungeon and give me a bonus Really, really like that preparation. Particularly like it because it is, again, not overwrought. Quick and easy. Same thing with that world phase in between each week. It's giving you kind of targets of where to go. Think, oh, I want to kind of go work on this region. So that might mean I want to try to do this type of quest 
in the adventure phase to try to unlock. It just kind of gets these big Machiavellian machinations going in your head. And I used Machiavellian wrong, but whatever, I'm going to go with it. Also, I'm still spinning my fingers, which is weird, but it kind of, it just gets your brain going. And I like that as well. And then the last thing I'll say is the story's pretty good. It really is pretty good. Now, it's not a top tier story, right? It's not Madara. It's not Osworn or Familiar Tales level story. But outside of those, it's tops. So, you know, I'm talking top five as far as dungeon crawl story goes. And that, that says a lot. I really think it's a very strong story. And I'm curious to where it's going to go. And I also think that I'm definitely going to want to go back and play through again because I'm already missing options in just the first week that I wish I had done. Really like that. So what are my quibbles with the game? Well, I, the first one is you just need so much stuff to really do it. Now, I'm going to show you this, and my camera's going to be all woo shaking all over. But I have a lot of stuff here. And to be clear, I have removed an entire box that I didn't keep. That was like walls and stuff. I just kept the characters out of there. And there's a bunch of boxes I did not get. And I have one more box coming that's called the Madness Box, which I actually really do need and will use. So keep that in mind. So as we can see here, I have my Tanaris Adventures, this huge thing. These are the extra characters where I took them out of a box. This box and this box. And I have another big box coming. And there's, a, again, as I said, a bunch of boxes that I don't have. It's a lot of game, a lot of game, and a lot of space. And if you're a dungeon crawl type fan like me, space is at a premium. And I'm at the point where I'm letting games go that I really like because I just want to space anymore. If you are like me, it's something to think about because you need the, at least two of those big boxes to play this game. You use Tanaris Adventures and Arena of the Contest. A lot of space. Now, within the game itself, my main quibble is there are a bunch of books. There's the city book, there's the quest book, there's the adventure book, and the rule book. And with the exception of the rule book, you are bouncing back and forth between those books a lot. And sometimes it is literally you're in the city book for a moment, and then you're jumping over to your quest book to kind of set up where you're going to go. But then once you've set up the quest, you have to go back to the adventure book and kind of go through part of the thing. That's going to take you back to the other... And it's a lot of bouncing back and forth between books. And sometimes I will admit, I was like, I don't know where to go. Now, it, I am getting used to it. But even after playing through a full week, there's definitely times where I was like, what book? Where am I supposed to be? I, I don't, I'm flipping, flipping pages. Oh my gosh, I'm in the wrong book. So there is some fiddliness there in how you're navigating the books. I think it will lessen again as I go through. But you're going to experience that for sure. The next thing I'll say is that there is a lot going on as you try to learn what all the different abilities are how things interact, how the AI is going to work. There's a thing called triggers where if a certain conditions are met on a character or enemy's turn, they will trigger and it can be hard to remember those triggers. Again, it's just a lot of things going on. Again, it's getting easier for me. And if you are someone who had played Arena of the Contest, you're going to have a leg up. But if you're coming into this blank, totally new, it's going to feel overwhelming for a little while. And just know that's a thing and also know that it's going to get better. And then the only other thing that I'm going to throw out there is it's possible that you might get overwhelmed with the number of characters and options that you have. Like that, that is possible. There's a lot going on, but that's not really a quibble, just something to think about. And the more characters you have, in some ways, it's actually the more powerful you can become because you can draft all those characters into your deck. But there's so many I can't imagine you run out. But it's just something you might feel like you have to have more and more and more, and then you never use some of it. And the only other thing that I will say is, as I said in my initial Arena Contest video, it's a D20 system. And it just, for whatever reason, I think D20s feel very swingy. Even though most of the time you're hitting on an 8, or you're hitting on a 7 on the D20. It just feels swingy. And I don't know why that is, but anyone who's played Dungeons & Dragons or something, you know what I'm talking about. You feel like you just can't hit, you can't hit, you can't hit. But there you have it, folks. That is Tanaris Adventures. I may come back and make another video on this when I finish the campaign, but 
So this is still a little bit my first look, but if you remember, I had Arena of the Contest in my top 10 dungeon crawls when I made that video a few years ago. And I think all in all, as someone who's looking for a solo co-op experience, story-based, character-driven, that this is one that is in that top 10 for sure. And I think across the board for the solo co-op player, Tanaris Adventures is an improvement on Arena of the Contest. So there you have it, folks. As always, if you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you so much for watching. Have a wonderful, wonderful day.